Darling viewers, it's Jen here at Check Her Joy, and this time I'm reviewing Twice Upon a Christmas by Shanna Swenson. This is a Christmas novella. It is released only as an ebook currently, and it is like a Hallmark movie, but in book form, which I love and adore because I watch so many Christmas movies this time of year. Like, I don't read many Christmas books, I just watch movies, so this was a good chance for me to read a Christmas story, but have that heartwarming Hallmark feeling to it. So this story follows Natalie and she basically has to make this decision in her life. It's Christmas time and everything's crazy and she has this one job in a PR firm that she's not terribly dedicated to and she's not getting very far in it but it's a steady job and it pays the bills. Whereas her other job, she is a singer so she performs in this group and they are especially busy around Christmas time as they go around and perform Christmas carols, basically. So sometimes she's dressed up in Victorian garb and doing performances on street corners or in offices. And sometimes she's dressed up in, you know, the gorgeous ball gowns and stuff, performing jazzy numbers at a holiday party. So basically, the month of December, she's completely booked and all her free time is pretty much spent singing, which she loves. But it's not a steady job, so she's hesitant to leave the PR job to take up singing full-time. And then one of her friends, who is also in the singing group, urges her to make a decision. Like, either do this full-time with the rest of us and commit so that we can try to broaden horizons so the rest of us can make this a full-time job also. Or stick with the PR job and let us, you know, find somebody else. Natalie is completely torn and doesn't know what to do. And her friend urges her to just flip a coin and have it fate decide. Natalie flips the coin but can't bring herself to look at it. Instead, she gives it to this street performer. And then from that moment on, she wakes up every day and basically relives it. So she's got two timelines going on from this point in early December until Christmas where she's just reliving every day twice. The first day it happens, she thinks it's the worst day ever. She completely bungles everything. She shows up to work with coffee on her shirt. And then she runs into her boss and he wants her and another co-worker to come up with a pitch for this really big corporate account they're trying to catch. And she blanks and can't think of anything. So her co-worker takes it, the big account. She gets stuck with this pro bono work that is helping this home for people who just age out of the foster care system. So these are people who are 18 but still in high school. And not every foster family is going to keep the child once they stop getting paid to do it. So at 18, they're no longer considered children and they're off on their own. And most of these kids are not prepared for that on their own. They're not prepared to try to finish high school and try to get a job and try to keep a flat, um, an apartment. So she ends up doing pro bono work for this um, organization because their patroness, like the benefactor of the house, um, could potentially become a big corporate account for her PR firm. So Natalie thinks she's gotten the short end of the straw having to go do this pro bono account. She shows up at the office. The guy who runs the house doesn't even want her there, isn't cooperative. He's all grumpy. And she's like, this is just awful. This is horrible. And then she goes to bed. And when she wakes up the next morning, she gets a do-over. She's like, hey, it's the same day again. What? She manages to not get coffee that morning so she can't spill it on herself. She already knows the right answer for the corporate account because she basically stole it from her coworker. And then her coworker ends up with a pro bono account. And so Natalie's life diverges on these two separate paths. There's also two separate love interests. Um, working with her on the corporate account is this guy. I think it's Jack. Tells you how well I, I felt for him because I can't remember his name. Um, so there's a love interest with the guy that she's working on the corporate account with, who is kind of obsessed with his job and maybe not my favorite. And then the guy who runs the house, Dan, he was grumpy. He's kind of like Eeyore though. He's like pessimistic, but also he cares a lot. You can tell because he's, he could have this really awesome, like he's a lawyer, so he could have an awesome rich paying job, but instead he dedicates his time and energy into this house for these former foster kids. 
and obviously I really like Dan more, in case you couldn't tell. But Natalie ultimately has to make a decision about which life she wants more. Does she want to keep the life where she's ha working on the pro bono account, but then has more time for her singing? Or does she keep the life where she has the corporate account? So besides the backdrop of all the Christmas parties and everything the singers are doing, the Halfway House is also trying to organize this Christmas event for promoting it to try to get more people to help donate in the future. So on the whole, I really enjoyed this. I gave it four stars, I think. Um, it's definitely an endearing Christmas story. I highly recommend this. And definitely Shana Swanson is one of my favorite authors. She also wrote the Enchanted Big series, which I absolutely adore. Love those. So peace out. I love you guys. Keep reading and happy holidays. Bye.